Hello, Rex fans. It's almost time. The Super Bowl over with. Good job, Chiefs. March Madness done. Shout out to uh, Lady Gamecocks, UConn, Two P. Can you do three? And by the time this program airs, the NFL draft will be over. Go Browns. It's almost time for the most exciting two minutes in sports, the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. I'm Lewis, sitting alongside of me, my man Rick Man Bob from RunFest, the premier information site for the Triple Crown races, the British Cup Juvenile, and the British Cup Classic. Rob, you ready, man? And I'm ready. You ready to do this? Ready to dive into it. I hear you, man. Let's do this. All right. So we started this podcast to teach people how to handicap the race. We know some people don't know about the racing game, but we're going to show you the tips. We're going to give you the tips to make you some money if you choose to listen. And with that being said, we use like various analytics, uh, handicapping tools that we think will bring you the best five. Well, in this case, it'll be six horses. I'll do three, and Rob will do three, that we think that is capable of winning the Kentucky Derby. Our, our model at Run Fast is let us maximize your earn earnings while minimizing your losses. All right, so with that being said, Rob, I pulled up a two week forecast and uh, for Louisville, and it calls for thunderstorms early, uh, early on in the day, and um, might be 77 degrees. So, with that being said, um, I pulled up a few mutters, or I think it, just in case the track is muddy, might win the race. So, we're going to start off with the Risen Star, and here we have. Uh, Sierra Leone, as you can see, the track is very muddy, and Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone is not affected by the mud. As you can see, he just zips, runs through the mud like it's fun. And for those who don't know, uh, a mutter is a horse who does well on a sloppy track. Uh, tracks have a grade, so either they're fast, wet fast, or sloppy. And what he's explaining right there was the it was a lot of water on the, a lot of moisture on the track. And so horses, some horses do well with moisture and some don't. And as he explained, Sierra Leone did very well and it didn't affect his uh, racing ability. And he, he did win that race, the Risen Star. And here's another uh, horse who I think runs very well in the mud. His name is uh, Mystic Dan. Let's take a look at Mystic Dan. In the Southwest Stakes, grade three. He's the horse on the rail. He loves the mud. Uh, effortlessly comes up the track, stretches yeah. it out. Yeah, he, he liked it, but he had a great run in that race. He he was on the rail the whole race. And Fabulous run. He really didn't have to do much, so I, I would throw that race out myself if I was a betting man. But <laughs> he was a good mother. <laughs> he was a good mother. So with that being said, let's get down to our picks. Rob, take it away, my man. Who you like? Well, I'm going to start with, well, I, I actually have four horses, but I'm going to start with my fourth horse, uh, which would be Stronghold. Uh, he raced in the uh, Santa Anita Derby. Uh, he ran against uh, Bob Baffert horse. Bob Baffert, you know, one of the best trainers in the horse game. Um, he ran against Imagination and went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and he beat him by like a head, but it was a strong showing off the uh, Santa Anita Derby. So I like him as my fourth horse. Uh, now, I'm, I was torn between two horses, Catching Freedom and Resilience. They both ran in the Risen Star. Risen Star, to me, was the best prep race of out of all the Kentucky Derby prep races this year. It had uh, four next out winners. Next out winners are horses who won after that race was over with. Hold on, Rob. You like it better than the Arkansas Derby? With I, move? Lo I like it better than the Arkansas Derby. With Move? Because these horses won after that race. <laughs> you know, they... They didn't, you know, they didn't go to other races and lose. They won after that race, which tell me that was a strong race. You know, Muth was Bob Baffert's horse, a heck of a horse, man. He's Rated a heck number of one. Horse, but as of right now, Muth is not in the race. So this is true. Know, we got to go with who we got. All right. Uh, so Resilience, uh, who did run in the Wood Memorial, which is in, up in New York, he did uh, run a bang up race. Uh, it, it wasn't a lot of competition in that race. Uh, but he did run good, and he won by like four or five lengths. And um, I like him. And then Catching Freedom, who was also in the Risen Star, uh, another horse who likes to slop, uh, likes to fast track. Uh, he came back and won the uh, Louisiana Derby. Um, he ran well. 
and he's a closer too. So which means closer means that you know he starts slow and ends fast. So wait a minute. So are you actually telling me that you like one of my horses catching freedom? Yeah, that's the only one. It, it, it probably won't happen again. But you know. <laughs> and then my top choice is Sierra Leone. I, I really believe Sierra Leone is going to win the Kentucky Derby this year. Uh, he won't be at long odds. But a winner is a winner. So you take money where you can get money. Um, he can run on any track, fast track, slow track. And one thing you probably didn't realize, fairgrounds, their stretch is very long. It's probably the longest in uh, North America. Kentucky Derby, is this, uh, Churchill Downs, is the second longest stretch in North America. See, my my man he, Rob is very versed on track. So, man. you know, coming down the stretch, you know, he has a lot of stretch to catch up to these horses. Coming from the back of the pack. So those are my picks. So what's your pick? Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Um, my top choice is Fierceness. Trained by Todd Pletcher. Uh, number four top trainer in the land. Written by John Velasquez, who's number 14. His equal base speed is 110. Second best in the field. Uh, win percentage as a three-year-old is 50%. Top three. You always... Uh, Top three means win place to show. Always going to hit the board. Um, top three percent in the field out of out of ten horses. Like I said, it's going to be in the top three. Now, the thing about um, fierceness is he's a speed horse. And let me pull up the Florida Derby. Once he gets out front, in my opinion, he is he's he's tough to catch. As you can see, he's coming down the stretch. To spread, just spread, just spreading it out. Not even asked to respond. Jockey's still on that. That's a that's a heck of a race. I know the competition was light in that race, but he has beaten some notables, including Muth and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile by five lengths. He's gonna be tough to beat, man. Let me tear a hole in this horse. Uh, <laughs> first, first of all, he was in a race. He was in a race. He was in a race with six other horses. Uh, six other horses who have not done anything besides a maiden win. N no stakes winners in those in, the, in that race. Uh, that was the weakest, probably the weakest Florida Derby field I've ever seen in my life. But <laughs> but he did what he was supposed to have he done. He did what he was supposed to have he done. He beat him by 10 lengths. Any, any, I think any one of these horses would have done that. Um, second of all, he's, the, he's probably the most inconsistent horse that's going to be in the Kentucky Derby Trail. Even though he has won big races, but he's he's an every other horse race. So one race he does well, and then the next race he, he's fifth or sixth. Now, to add to add to that point, he has a point. Like the Breeders' Cup Juvenile blew away the field by five lengths. Then the Holy Bull got messed around and got held up in the pack and came in third. And then the Florida Derby blew the field off by ten. Hopefully, Pletcher will get that out of him. And I think he's going to be tough to beat. I don't see him getting it out of him. Because <laughs> he's not, I mean, he's a speed horse, but he's not that fast. Uh, and I don't want any betters to lose money because he's going to be the favorite. He's going to take a lot of money, and that's going to be a waste of money. They're going to be throwing money away. So I, fierceness to me, I would throw him off the ticket. He, he wouldn't be first. He wouldn't be th second or third. I would throw him right off the ticket. Rob, that's in my In my professional opinion. <laughs> Rob, that's insulting. You know, My feelings are hurt. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm here to hurt your feelings. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I would throw him off the ticket. Uh, let's see what else you got. because The one that we do agree on is uh, Catching Freedom, uh, trained by Cox, number two rated uh, trainer in the country, written by uh, Flavian Pratt, number one jockey, win percentage, 67%. Uh, top three, that means uh, his last three races, two first and one second. Equal base speed, this bothers me, uh, 98 uh, top 3%, 100% that he will finish first, second, or third. Now, what I like about this horse, he's an adversity horse. And what I mean by adversity is during during his race, he gets into trouble. But yet still, he still manages you know, to pull up and finish the race strong. Uh, let's go to the Louisiana Derby so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, as you can see, he's coming from behind. He swung very wide. And now, that means he has more ground to make up. To me, that's adversity. 
And yet and still, he still manages to pull himself together and to overtake the field. Now, now one, to add to that, one more thing I like about uh, Catching Freedom is his pace. His pace is consistent from like six furlongs to a mile. From six furlongs to a mile, he still averages a 54 pace. From a mile to a mile and an eighth, still 54. So that means that while other horses are tiring, he's still consistent and he'll, he'll overtake um, tiring horses. So that's what I love about uh, Catching Freedom. I mean, you know, I, as I stated, I like him also. Uh, and then when you look at the Kentucky Derby, the last few Kentucky Derbies, closers have been ran big in the, in the race in the last few years. Uh, so speed hasn't been holding in Kentucky. I don't know why. Maybe they changed the dirt or whatever. But closing has been, you know, a big deal in the Kentucky Derby. So that's why he's my second-rated horse also. Uh, my third pick, and I love long shots, uh, Just Steel, uh, trained by Dwayne Lucas, uh, number 15, written by Asmussen, 128th rated jockey. I think he won't be on uh, Just Steel. <laughs> uh, his win percentage is none. He hasn't won a race yet, but he always seems uh, to hit the board, 75%. What I like about this horse, he's another adversity horse. And um, in the Oaklawn... Like I said earlier, as far as adversity, you know, when he gets into trouble, he still manages to pull himself together and still either win the race or at least hit the board. And he's the A-horse coming right here. Now, you have to look very carefully. He's going to misstep. So, like I said, you have to see, you have to look very careful. But coming down the stretch, he missed step, and that takes a lot of energy for a horse to pull himself back up and to even finish in a race. That's what I like about this horse. And plus, um, he has a 109 equal base speed rating. That's another thing I like. I will put him underneath third or fourth. Now, now you don't necessarily have to win the race to make money. So let's just say. Sierra Leone is going off at five to two, which would get you seven dollars. But, but if Justil is going off at forty to one, and he comes in third, and he pays, I'm gonna say fifteen dollars to come in third. So who who really wins? If you put twenty dollars on him to come in third, you get back one hundred fifty. You put twenty dollars for uh, Sierra Leone uh, Sierra Leone to win, you get back seventy. And the object is is to make more money than you put in the race. What do you think, Rob? I mean, I agree with what you're saying. If you can find that long shot that can, you at le least hit the money, which is first, second, or third. But I don't believe it's just steel. Uh, Who you like his long shots? I, my what long shot, I mean, I like just a touch. I don't really know what he's going off at, but I know he's he's least in the uh, teens or, 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 you know, the 20, 20 to 1 area. Uh, just, just a touch, he finished second in the uh, Bluegrass Stakes uh, behind Sierra Leone. Um, he ran, he ran a, a, a great race, and if it wasn't for Sierra Leone uh, closing down the lane, he would have won that race. And I, I like him. He got He's a Brad Crox trainee. He's a Florent Giroux. He's riding him. He was, he was an experienced jockey. Um, so just a touch would be my long shot, you know, if I had one to pick. So Now, I like two other horses that, may, that you may, can use underneath that may hit the board. One is um, West Saratoga. Uh, West Saratoga is going to go off long. He's going to go off a long, maybe 40, 50 to 1. I do believe uh, he's an experienced horse, and he seems to – he never wins a race, but he seems to always finish in the money. So if you put him third and he's going off at 50 to 1, um, you show him, uh, you might be a handsome payday. Also, Anna Marie. Anna Marie is another one I like. Who I think is going to hit the board. Um, I'm going to use her – him underneath for at least second through five and try to come up on a the trifecta or you know the superfecta 
I think the horse is going to go off pretty long, too. I mean, if you want a lottery ticket horse to bet on, <laughs> Encino would be that horse. I mean, he's going to probably be a 80, 90, or 100 to 1. Bro. I don't like Encino. I know you don't What's like you him. What you like about Encino? I like him because he's consistent. He wins. Uh, and he, he's shown that, you know, he, he, he can win against competition, too. Uh and he doesn't give up. Uh, you know, coming down the stretch, you know, a horse come. It looks like he's about to lose, but he fights back and wins. So, if you want a long shot, a lottery ticket, I'm not saying he's going to win him. That would be my long shot right there in Cena. And those are our picks for the Kentucky Derby. All right, so Rob, post position. A lot of people believe that the post position doesn't really matter. I think it's huge. Yeah, the post position is huge, especially for a horse like you, like Fierceness. Uh, he's a speed horse, so he can't be too far out or too far in. So he has to be somewhere in that middle range to where he can speed out and not have to worry about horses pummeling this way or horses, you know. So, yeah, horse, uh, wherever you draw, that that's going to be big. So even though we handicap the race now, we still probably going to have to, after the horse draw, we still going to have to handicap it again. Because, I mean, it's, it's going to change the whole dynamics of everything. I'm not worried about the horse I have, Sierra Leone, because he's a closer. And he's going to be last starting out anyway. So no matter where he at, nine times out of ten, he's not going to get trampled. And that's catching freedom also. Yeah. So See, what I need, I need fierceness to be somewhere between five and 12. That way I know he gets out in front. If he's one to four, he might get pinched in. Anywhere after that, I, I have a... A big concern, but so hopefully he gets a favorable, favorable draw. They're gonna have to catch him, man. You don't have to be worried. He's not gonna win. That uh, I'm that, telling you that now. That old <laughs> adage. I'll take. I'll take speed over pace yes. any day. If it was real speed, it's this is not blazing speed. His speed is okay. Only reason his speed shows is because there's not much speed in the race. So his speed shows because there's not too many horses that are fast. So. But I still think there's two or three horses that are going to be faster than him. But Rob, you know, remember he beat Move. Yeah, he did. He did. And speaking of Move, what's going on with Move? Well, his owner had sued uh, the lower courts in Kentucky to see if he will be able to run because Bob Baffert is suspended from the Derby. Any of his horses can't run. Um, so the lower courts came back and said no. So the owner, I think it was late Friday, he put another petition in the court. For a higher court to rule on it, so that that should be, I think, probably the middle of this week. They they're going to decide on that, and then it's another horse named Imagination who ran in a San, Santa Anita Derby, uh, who lost a stronghold, but it was only by a neck. Um, he's waiting to see what happens too, because if Muth is able to run, he he wants to sue to run also. So they will change the dynamic because those are fast horses, those horses with real speed. So, so we're, we're talking about Bob Baffert horses, and Bob Bob likes his horses out front. He likes his speed horses. Um, with that being said, you know, um, you think we'll see, if he doesn't win, you think we'll see him in the Preakness? Oh, yeah. Belmont? All, every, every horse he has will be in the Preakness. And he has Maybe one. not the Belmont, but <laughs> all the horses he have, he'll probably have four horses in the Preakness. Afterfield will be his in the Preakness. So. He has one more who I think is the best horse three-year-old out there, and his name is Nisos. And I don't know where he's at. I haven't seen him in any races lately, but he's out there lurking about, and Nisos is a monster. Yeah, he's gearing up for the Preakness. Um, yeah, they all will be in the Preakness. I mean, you know. But I, I don't see any of them running in the Belmont uh, because of the distance. Um, and they haven't run since one. Well, Imagination hasn't run. Since the Santa Anita Derby or uh, Muth hasn't run since the Arkansas Derby. So I think he'll take it easy. He'll run them in the Preakness and then ship them back to California. You think, man? I don't yeah. know, man. Bob trying to trying to recoup some of that money he oh, had no, lost no, for no, being no. suspended, he, man. He, he lost that money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bob <laughs> trying to get that money back, that man. Money's I don't, gone. He, he might throw him in a yeah. Belmont, too. You never know. We'll, we'll just get him ready for the uh, Ridgers Cup Classic. Yeah. And, that, and the summer races. Summer races, yeah. So. Yeah, so the post draw is what April twenty seventh. So that's this Saturday. That's something different. They usually they, changed, huh? they usually hold on it on a Monday before the race, but they're doing it seven days out. Uh, something new they want to try. I don't know why they didn't really say. So yeah, it'll be this Saturday, and it'll, it'll be at like twelve fifteen Eastern time. Um, 
So then, you know, we can really sit down and handicap and have our past performances. And then we can really give you like some good information then. See, now it's easy for us to sit up here and tell you who we think might win and, and might not win. If you don't have any skins in the game, you can talk all day long. See, most other uh, individuals um, who, who give you information, you very seldom see them going to a racetrack and placing, placing a bet. I like to gamble. I'm going up the thistle down. I got skins in the game. So I believe <laughs> I will post my tickets on Instagram. I will show you. So if, if I win, fierceness, if I win, you win. If I lose, you lose. And I do not like to lose. So I will have some skins in the game. So I do my homework. Rob does his. I'm not trying to lose any money. Hey, we're, we're in this together. So if you don't want to lose, don't bet fish. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, you can follow him, follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I will have my picks. Uh, and then you can, we can interact, whatever. But I will have my picks ready. And uh, I'm going to win you some money. He going down. He's still he's still strutting like a peacock because he beat me with a uh, Sierra Leone over door knock. <laughs> what race was that? That was the uh, bluegrass. Yeah, you got lucky. You got lucky. And I actually picked the spot door knock was coming. In. Yeah, you got Fourth. lucky. You got lucky. So, with that being said, I'm gonna leave you with this: money won is a lot sweeter than money earned. We'll see you in the, we'll see you in the winner's circle. Peace. Kevin,